So let's go ahead and create a map in Tableau. I'm tired of bar charts and I want to see something a little bit more visually interesting and have a different way of showing data across different spaces. And in Google Trends, if you have that data, you can go ahead and download a CSV file of that. Normally, you'd be seeing that in uh, the area up here with a little down arrow and a line. I do not have that. So some plugin is blocking that for me. Uh, if it is for you, try it on a different computer or ask a friend to download it for you. There's a few other ways that are more complicated to get to that with uh, an API connection to Google Trends. And I have that on the channel as well. Uh, Appify is a way to get that. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and download that CSV uh, here in Google Trends and bring it into Tableau. So notice we do have a subregion there. Um, that's what I have selected now. You can actually choose that down arrow and choose Metro or City. Those are a little bit more complicated, and I'm not fully confident Tableau could pull off all of that if I don't have the city and state together in perfect harmony. Uh, but I'm a little worried that Lima, Ohio might come in as Lima, Peru. Uh, but <laughs> let's go ahead and try uh, subregions. So I know state and province are going to work very well uh, for that. So we're going to pop over to Tableau. And remember, you would go to data, add new data source, and pull in that CSV uh, to this file and you will get this here. So these are the keywords that came in um, with their search interest for each individual one. You may have pivoted the data and pulled it into one file. This is just uh, separated out. Uh, I just wanna focus right now on mapping it depending on how you use your measures. Uh, those can be set up a little bit differently. But notice uh, right now, USA obviously is a country, but that is where it's storing our state or in the case of Canada, or other places, province, uh, but in this case, state. And we want to change that from that regular ABC string to a geographic role. So depending on your data, there's some other options here in Tableau. This is clearly a state or province, and uh, others are a lot of fun to use as well. If you have a lead list of customers with like phones and emails, that's pretty common. I would use area code off that phone so I can see where the customers are coming from with the caveat that obviously places like a, a Toronto, Seattle, San Francisco, you're gonna have a lot of people coming from all around the world that maybe kept their old area code. So I still have my Chicago area code on my phone and I am clearly in Seattle for the last eight years. So that would mess up the data, not be as accurate, but you know, it might give you directional numbers. So depending on the types of projects you're using, if it's directional enough to get you a gauge for what's happening without being perfect, that's certainly fine depending on the context. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and change that geographic role to state and province. And you'll see it move from an ABC to that uh, little globe icon. And you'll notice a few things here. Latitude and longitude were generated automatically by Tableau. So it's pretty cool. So now we can bring the longitude up there to the columns and the latitude to the rows. And it automatically had a map come up here. Otherwise, you can click show me and put the map there uh, if your Tableau isn't popping that automatically. And we are on our way. So I actually want to bring uh, that USA to the detail level. And now we have some dots there. So the detail level is just giving it that context of the region. It knows it's going to be mapping something there. Uh, and now we can take a measure and work with that. So. I'm going to take that search interest from one of the keywords I searched here, and I'm going to drop that on label. Uh, okay, so I noticed it's got a lot of extra zeros there. So I'm going to actually set some defaults before I bring it in. So I'm going to right click on that, and I want to go to default properties. And there's two things I want to change. I want to change the number format, uh, and I'm going to go to standard. Uh, you can also do custom and and set that up. I'm going to try standard first and see if it brings it in like I want to see it. We saw a couple extra zeros at the end, which has really taken up a lot of space. Uh, they're the size of a, a large metropolitan city. So I don't want those extra zeros if they're not going to be helpful. I'm going to click OK. And then I want to also bring that in uh, to color. So here's one way of mapping uh, by the intensity of the color on the state or province. And we can then see where the searches are coming from. And it's doing it with, looks like, up to uh, two decimal places, or at least just cutting off the extra zeros. So 
that's pretty good. And then we, let's see, we lost the label. We can bring the label back there. And now you've got that. So we have a whole extra map uh, a map menu up here, and there are options. So it depends on what you want your users to do when you're publishing this. So you can go to the options there. You can show a scale. So that's going to add that 1,000-mile scale there. Uh, you can add a search up here so they could search a state. You could take that off if you just want it to be a little cleaner. You can allow them to pan and zoom. So I have it set that way so you could pan and zoom if you're the user when you make it uh, published and you can zoom in and see a little bit better. This one's not too difficult to see since the states, well, at least most of them are fairly large. Um, yeah, so it looks pretty good. Of course, you can change out of the default colors. It brought this one up for the intensity on automatic. Definitely get out of the defaults and get to something that matches the, the palette of what you're working with. Uh, is it here and remember you can do stepped color if you don't want the actual tiny gradients you just want a few to make it a little bit uh, easier to compare things that are roughly the same and you can also flip the intensity if you want uh, depending on what you think communicates to the user that one is less and one is more uh, so that's something to test out and get into user feedback if it comes across uh, that way and that you get the message of more and less in the right way to the right colors. So think through how that would work for you. Um, and right now, just notice we have it on automatic with the map there. Uh, so there's other ways we could display this uh, for sure. Uh, we could choose a density. And so now we've got uh, a density and you can see the, the darker uh, density circles that kind of fade in and out are there and we can change that color uh, as well to something else. Um, that's one I like to use a lot. Uh, you also have a lot of other options here on maps. So uh, it gave us this built-in one with the state names and the country. Uh, all these things are, are optional. So you can actually uh, you know, if you're pretty clear which one is the United States and which one is Mexico and Canada, you can turn off uh, the country and region names. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with that <laughs> since we should probably know that by now. Um, you can also take these different layers, like that's the land cover layer off. You can add in terrain if you want a little mountainous stuff. You can take the coastline on there as well if you want. Um, or you can take all these things off and make it uh, <laughs> maybe a little bit of the country and make it more simple. Um, you can also, I mean, you can take that off and then only add uh, U.S. metro boundaries and see the, the cities, which, I mean, as a whole country, that looks kind of uh, difficult. But if you wanted to zoom in and you had uh, city data and you wanted to see uh, maybe Kansas City versus Cincinnati uh, versus St. Louis uh, in the metro areas and have more data like that, especially things like census data or other stuff that we might be bringing in later uh, that could work uh, quite well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take that off. And notice, too, you can change from light to normal, a little bit darker. I like actually the, you know, it's kind of cool to have the, the dark uh, color there. Uh, there's a uber uh exercise that i like to do pulling in the uh city data and your own rides and uh there's a, a post on medium that goes through that that is one of my favorites and it uses the dark data and it looks pretty cool to see all of that uh you can also uh go street level and zoom in all the way there and uh see what you have at the <laughs> at the highway and street level which is pretty cool kind of like Google Maps or something like that. There's also the uh, outdoors version, so you get to see a little bit of the topography uh, and uh, satellite data as well. So probably not for Google search trends that detailed. I think that's probably a little bit of a privacy invasion, although it's very possible to do in some ways, but not with the data we have. Uh, and then you can uh, wash it out a little bit so you can see the data on top of it without having the background layers be uh, disruptive to what you're up to. So um, you can also bring in external stuff and uh, data here. You can uh, layer in uh, population data, household data, occupations, 
uh, things like that. And uh, that may be an additional layer to your, your data and how that works. But just very simply, we've got an awesome map here and uh, you can check different things out. You can bring in uh, background images and other stuff like that. So uh, you can also edit the locations. So I pulled this in from Google. The first two rows I know of the Google data are just kind of like a uh, little search information and you can delete that in Excel before you bring it in or not. Uh, it'll show you here uh, with that automatic thing where it went from a map, uh, from a text to a map that these are the things that matched and didn't. So that might work if you're doing cities. And like I said, the, you know, Lima, Ohio, or Lima, Ohio, and Lima, Peru, and making sure they're uh, matched the right way, you could uh, edit that using this. So just to show you again where that is, some maps and edit location, and you can uh, update that as well here. So uh, it's just pretty cool that Tableau can do that automatically for you, but you can still maintain control of that and, and set it up the way you would like. So that is a simple map in Tableau. Uh, definitely explore and try new things. There's so many different formatting options. Uh, the Tableau Public Viz Gallery out there has uh, a lot of other options. Um, this is just the very start of like a couple different ones and you can label all sorts of things that you would like uh, and go from there. So good luck.